for questions at the end of this presentation. And if it's your first time joining us, know that we do, uh, Review the Labs hosts a, week, a monthly uh, webinar focusing on different topics pertaining to skin and skin care. So you can always find the dates and topics on our website, revivalabs.com. And you look under About Us and Events, and you'll see the whole list for the rest of the year. So, um, you know, take a look. And, um, and if you have any topic that you would like to know more about or would like us to address, please let us know. Um, we, we would be happy to uh, create something for you and, and talk about it with you all. Um, and if you know someone who is missing today's event, uh, all, all our presentations are uploaded onto our website, revivalabs.com, and you would look under blog and you'll see all the presentations. So no worries if you have to miss it. Okay, um, so let's begin. And again, all um, all questions at the end, this just makes it a little bit easier. I'm happy to um, stick around and, and um, just chat with you in our chat pod, which I can't seem to get rid of right now, so I apologize. So anyway, we'll just deal with it. So here we go. So for those of you who don't know much about Reviva Labs, we have uh, been in existence since 1973 when our founders, Stephen and Judith Strassler, created the brand with uh, one goal. And that was always to create safe and effective uh, skincare treatments that provided visible results at, and this is key, a reasonable price. So we've been continuing in that tradition for over half a century, or just about a half a century now. Um, and we have established ourselves as a superior natural skincare brand that uh, attracts many generations of loyal customers. And we remain committed to using only the highest quality ingredients that are both safe and effective as we continue to formulate uh, um, products that are suitable for all skin types. So that's a little bit about us, if you didn't already know. Um, so let's take a, a close look at at it, our topic. Okay, let's begin. Sunlight, the good and the bad. So there are actually good effects um, that we receive as um, from the sun. And sunlight travels to the earth in a mixture of visible and invisible rays or waves of light, if you will. And we commonly known as ultraviolet light, um, or even more commonly known as sunshine. Um, so what do we need uh, sunshine for? It helps us keep our sleep patterns on track. We don't often think about that, but that's really super important to our equilibrium and well-being. And speaking of well-being, sunlight actually um, uh, keeps us happy. There are clinical studies to prove that when you get too little sun, it can cause what's known as seasonal depression in some people or seasonal affective disorder, also known as SAD. And there are... Um, light boxes that people who suffer from SAD um, can purchase. And um, they sit in front of it um, just to receive that light and it definitely helps their mood. Um, so yeah, it's super important for happiness. But more, you know, more uh, equally important is that um, sunshine helps our skin, which is the largest organ in the body, make vitamin D. And vitamin D is needed for uh, helping our bodies produce calcium and phosphorus or, or um, um, being able to um, process those minerals for normal bone function. And vitamin D is also super important to our health, specifically to our immune system. So, and all you need, I've gotten this question a lot, like, wow, should I not use sunblock because I need my vitamin D? And the answer is no, you only need 10 to 15 minutes a day. And typically just on the back of the hands, your arms, your face would be enough to trigger that vitamin D stimulation um, or the, the stimulate the response to vitamin D that our, our skin needs. So that's super important. Okay, the bad effects, which is what we're gonna focus on today mostly, um, are what the rays do to us and what kind of rays and, and sunscreens affect different rays. So, or how they interact with different rays. So a UVB rays are shorter and they cause sunburn. UVA rays are a little bit longer and they affect skin's health. Now, the simple way to remember that is uh, B for burning, A for aging. And the A rays are the rays that you get um, on a cloudy day, 
um, where your skin, you know, what happens to you, like it's a cloudy day, but you've been outside and you go, wow, my skin feels sensitive, but the sun isn't strong. It's not even out. Well, it's the UVA rays that are um, affecting your skin. So, um, and why that is, is UVA rays damage your uh, DNA. They dis disrupt the skin's growth they an appearance and over time that exposure can make the skin look elastic and saggy uh thicker more leathery uneven and skin toned and it can also cause wrinkled or thinner skin um, and your skin basically is just uh, not able to protect you as well now that second and third uh bullet point look contradictory it can sun the uva rays make your skin thicker and UVA rays make your skin thinner. So let's, I just wanna uh, touch on that a little bit. If you have, um, the deeper and darker your skin naturally is, uh, the thicker your skin is, the more densely packed uh, the skin cells are. So, so the more sun, someone, let's say on the Fitzpatrick uh, scale, like if that's a, a relative scale of light and dark to skin, if you have darker skin, your skin will become more leathery the more exposed and, and thicker the more exposed it is to sunshine. If you have lighter skin, <coughs> pardon me, um, um, your skin is naturally thinner, so it will become more wrinkled and, and continue to be thinner because the, uh, the collagen it, um, will be disrupted and collagen was what gives the skin its strength. So if you don't, if you're destroying that collagen, um, your skin becomes thinner and less able to protect itself. So basically the, but the more exposure you have, uh, the er in your earlier age, um, to the, the earlier skin will, will age in general. Does that make sense? Sorry, I, that wasn't really clear. So th th if you are exposed early, you will have show signs earlier of um, uh, of signs of damage as well. Okay, the skin does naturally uh, protect us. Uh, and again, that is the whole function of skin as an organ in the body. It's there to protect us uh, from external um, um, assaults. It is there to keep us all together and keep everything in that's supposed to stay in. Um, so, it is a natural protective just in and of itself, but what helps you protect your skin even more is your genetics. Your DNA determines how much pigment you have in your skin, and the deeper your pigment, the more natural protection you have. Um, the other way your skin protects you is in its ability to constantly turn the cells, the skin cells over. Um, they are constantly splitting and dividing and um, replacing themselves as the um, uh, cells become less, um, you know, they lose their moisture and they became less able to protect us and they die off and they shed. So that continuous um, process really helps your barriers stay strong and able to protect you. Um, and, and think about it. Um, one of the simplest examples, like you can't see your skin shedding every single day and your skin cells turning over every single day. And, and they're doing it. They're not doing it in concert. They're not doing it all together. Hey, every 28 days turn, you know, it's not like that. It's, it's, you know, um, it's haphazard and continuous, right? So, but if you think about it and you get a, a bad sunburn and you know how your skin peels and in layers almost, and then usually in about I don't know, a week, maybe two, 10 days, your skin looks normal again. That is your skin in action 100%. It is doing what it's supposed to be doing, which is receiving the signal to split and divide, rush up to the top of the skin. Your skin's been burned. Let's replace it all together now. Let's go do it. Um, but as you get older, it gets harder for your skin to repair itself and particularly the underlying connective tissues, which means, you know, your, your elastin, your collagen, um, which means that that's what leads to more wrinkles and lines. And sustained ex exposure to the sun can also um, raise your risk of skin cancer, the most common type of cancer in the United States. Because um, as we said, the, the, the UVA rays damage the DNA, 
And when that DNA is damaged, it can't split and divide, or it may grow and divide too rapidly. And that can lead to clumps of extra cells that result in a tumor or a lesion that can become malignant. Um, and they can be harmless too, but um, anyway, I don't want to get too deeply into into that, that aspect of, of uh, UV damage, but I think that's what we're, we all know is, is the potential if you don't protect yourself. So how can we protect ourselves? Not always easy, but really, if you can limit your sun exposure, particularly, you know, between the hours of 10 and 4, you, you're you helping yourself. So if, if you like to walk on the beach, do it before 10 a.m. or after 4. Um, or, you know, if you like a gardening, anything that you're doing outside, I, I just do it early or later. But try to avoid 10 a.m. to 4 because that's when the sun is directly overhead and you will get the full force of that UV light. And if you can also avoid prolonged daily exposure. So let's say you do have to be out between 10 and 4. Try to limit that time. Don't, don't stay outdoors a long time. And if you have to work outdoors, make sure you're protecting yourself with clothing. Um, sunscreen, if you have to stay outside all day, you need um, uh, to cover up completely with, with protective clothing. You also need to start protecting your skin young, uh, really young. Um, again, protective clothing for babies under six months old, but you can apply uh, sunscreens as well to children. And we'll talk more about sunscreens and how to use sunscreens because I think it's one of the most misused skincare product on the planet. And number four, do not use tanning beds that you are getting a full on UV light exposure in 10 minutes to stimulate those cells to turn you tan. The tanning beds, as I understand it, use mostly UVA rays. That's why you tan as opposed to burn. Um, quite frankly, this is my personal opinion. I'm surprised they're even legal because um, they're, they're so, so bad for you. Um, and number five, of course, use sunscreen and check the expiration date. Um, most should remain uh, strong, like be able to protect you for at least up to three years after purchase. But let's think about that. It has to be stored properly every time you use it. Um, <clears throat> don't let it sit in the sun. If, it's, if your sunscreen bottle or tube sits in direct light or exposed to heat, let's say you leave it in the car or you put it in the bag at the beach or the pool or the lake, um, it won't be effective. It's starting to break down. <laughs> Think about it. How many times have you been at, you know, outdoors, you know, uh, where people are enjoying the sun and you see tubes or bottles of sunscreen just lying there on the blanket all day long? Well, you got to toss that puppy. That is not lasting three years. That is, uh, you know, absorbing all those light rays. So be careful. <clears throat> all right, let's dig in a little further. Sunscreen facts. SPF, as most of us know, stands for sun protection factor, but it really should be sunburn protection factor. Um, and this is a formula that could potentially help you understand what level of protection you need. So it is, this formula is your MED times the SPF number equals the time that you can expect to be protected from your sunscreen. Okay, so let's break that down a little bit. An MED is the minimal erythema dosage. That's the number of minutes that it takes for your sun, your skin to redden without sunscreen. So you would take that MED and multiply it by an SPF number. So for example, uh, let's say your MED is 10 minutes. So you can be out in the sun and after 10 minutes, you start seeing um, your skin starting to get bright or it feels a little sensitive to the touch. Okay, so 10 minutes is your MED. You multiply it by SPF 30. That means that you can expect roughly 300 minutes or five hours of protection. But that's just the basics. Um, and you can do the math on SPF 15, SPF 50, so on and so forth. But it goes a little bit beyond that. You have to be careful of relying too much on this formula. That's just a basic formula to start out with because it's how you apply it that really makes the difference. 
um, you need at least one ounce. And, you know, the common way of looking at that is um, <clears throat> a shot glass full or 45 milliliters of sunscreen all over to get that protection. And you have to do it every two hours because, you know, you sweat. Maybe you went in the water. Maybe, you know, it just comes off. You missed a spot. Be, just be careful about using this um, this formula too much, but understand that you have to take other precautions as well, which we'll, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about more. But um, that that's sort of where it all comes from, that number, that SPF number. So let's talk about the types of sunscreens. You have a... Um, um, a physical block, um, which are also known as sunblocks, they create an actual barrier. They filter out and reflect light rays back up. Uh, they just, the bright rays, light rays come down and just bounce off that barrier. Um, and just, and that's how it protects you. Chemical sunscreens absorb and convert the rays into heat and they scatter them. Um, and broad spectrum products protect against UVA and UVB. So you you have to anyway. Sorry, we'll we'll get into which one is best for you in in a minute. Um, but those are basically the three types of sunscreens that are available today. So some guidelines. Let's go a little bit further into those guidelines. Yes, you have to apply every two hours and immediately after swimming. Um, sunscreen takes about fifteen minutes. To absorb into your skin so you have to do it before you go out into the sun and i think this is one of the the biggest reasons people will say like i don't know what happened i i use sunscreen but think think about human nature here maybe you know, let's say you drive to wherever it is you're going to be outside you know the pool the lake the, the beach right you walk from your car to your spot you chit chat with your friends meanwhile you're you're out there for about, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes without sunscreen. So your, bo your body is still absorbing all those rays, right? And think about your MED. If your MED is 10, you've already started. You're starting to heat up and, and, and the sun is starting to respond to your skin. So you really do need to apply sunscreen before you ever leave the house because it takes about 15 minutes for it to absorb and be able to do its job to protect you. So when you're going from the car to the to your wherever your destination is, you're you're fully protected. And you have to apply at least a full ounce to cover your whole body. Um, and how that what that means for your face, let's say you're you're covered up completely, you don't want anything on your body, you just want your face protected, you would need to apply at least a nickel size. I've also heard it as large as a quarter size to your entire face. It seems like a lot because we're not used to doing that much, but you really need to up up your game if you're not applying at least a nickel amount. And don't forget to apply sunscreen to the tops of your ears, the neck, the tops of your feet, very, very sensitive places that often get um, the short shrift in, in that application. So let's take a look about which sunscreen is right for you. <clears throat> okay, physical uh, sunscreens tend to be less irritating and they're really good for sensitive skins because these, remember, this is the one that sits on top and causes a block. Um, they're also good for people who spend a lot of time in the sun or work outdoors. They can feel slightly more moisturizing because again, they're sitting on top of the skin and they can have a heavy feel, a little bit more occlusive, but they're, that's what they're doing. That's how they operate. That's, that's their, the way they work. Um, and it takes time for the ingredients to blend to the, into the skin. Um, many brands have, um, tinted versions, so you can look for those and that eliminates that whitish, whitish cast. Chemical sunscreens are terrific if you are going swimming or, you know, swim laps every morning or whatever. Um, um, outdoor sports, if you do outdoor sports, um, or if you want to wear cosmetics over your sunscreen, you know, a foundation that that's because your foundation doesn't have any sunscreen in it. Um, chemical sunscreens are great for that, um, but you want to make sure you're protected or you want a sunscreen that absorbs more quickly into your skin. So those are just basic differences between these two. Um, if you want even more protection, 
look for sunscreens that um, have antioxidants or skincare products that have antioxidants. Why? Because antioxidants are substances that can protect and pre uh, prevent or slow down the damage caused by free radicals. And remember, free radical, an unstable molecule that your body produces as a reaction to environmental or other stressors. So environmental would be sun, pollution, cigarette smoke, car exhaust, all those things set off um, free radicals. And they're also referred to as free radical scavengers. Um, Antioxidants are referred to as free radical scavengers because they like little Pac-Man. They, they sort of chomp up the uh, free radicals. So some of the top antioxidants used in skin care for protecting and healing the skin, vitamin E does a great job at defending against stress. Vitamin C not only helps protect and prevent future damage, but it helps to brighten your skin as well, you know, as you use it daily. Um, so that's a multitasking antioxidant. Um, niacinamide, um, also known as uh, vitamin B3, another multitasking uh, antioxidant. Not only does it protect and prevent damage, but it helps build protein in your skin. Um, it helps your skin retain moisture and it helps to reduce inflammation. Green tea, also an anti-inflammatory, very good for sensitive skin because it reduces that redness and resveratrol. Uh, from grapes, uh, that's been uh, suggested, you know, the study suggests that when topically applied, it helps to protect against the UVB, the burning rays, the damage uh, for that causes um, the skin uh, in burning rays. So products that we have at, at Reviva Labs, we have a SPF 30 sun protective moisturizer sunscreen. So this is good for everyday defense, um, but it is, remember, it is a moisturizer as well. So it does two jobs. It protects you with SPS 30, but it also helps your skin retain moisture and remain hydrated throughout the day. Um, I've listed here the two um, sunscreens that we use. The sun protective factors is avabenzone. That is commonly used to block UVA rays and um octano octanoate sorry um that is a uvb absorber so you know we are we do have half and half in there or almost half and half of uh, uva uvb block um but again as opposed to saying this is a uh um what do i want to say um a full protection <clears throat> a broad spectrum protection product I would say this is an SPF 30 and moisturizer um, because it's not exactly equal on the two types of sunscreen, uh, sunscreen protectors. But I use this every day when I go out for my walks. Um, I find the moisturization is a perfect amount for my, my skin um, and I know that I'm protected. <clears throat> With regard to getting extra protection and prevention, uh, some of our products that offer Excellent antioxidant care are the antioxidant skin suits smoothing advanced day cream. This is chalk filled with antioxidants. We have a complex of alpha lipoic acid, which is a very strong antioxidant, vitamin C, vitamin E, and green tea. Um, and it'll help with past damage too, um, just with those healthy natural oils, barrage, rosehip fruit, flaxseed oil, lavender, essential oil one of my favorites. Um, for serums to use underneath your moisturizer, or as I do underneath the SPF 30 moisturizer, dual source vitamin C serum, two sources of potent vitamin C, so it's going to work on that prevention and uh, protection of your skin, but it also helps with the brightening. And then the Swiss Apple Stem Cell Serum um, has a, it's just chock filled with um, botanicals, including um, green apple stem cells, which help to improve your, the past environmental damage. And speaking of past environmental damage, sometimes when the damage is done, you just need more. So um, maybe some of you are familiar with some of these products. They're some of our top sellers in the anti-aging collection. Uh, three products that use glycolic acid. Glycolic acid is an alpha hydroxy acid sourced from sugarcane, and it's terrific for when you already have experienced damage or have acne skin or your skin is showing visible signs of aging. 
It actually helps to um, speed up the cell renewal and give brush, fresher, brighter, smoother skin in a facial cleanser, followed by the toner, and then to 10% glycolic acid cream, another one of my favorites that I use at night to take care of past damage. Um, brightening collection. Uh, we use a variety of ingredients in the brightening collection and a variety of products. So I encourage you to take a look at our website, but kojic acid, lactic acid, and hydroquinone are all known to help brighten the skin, work to diminish the appearance of dark spots that have come as a result of sun damage, um, discoloration in general, maybe from acne scarring, and it also helps brighten while evening out your skin tone. With cleanser, we have two different types of cream, the hydroquinone brightening cream or the kojic acid brightening cream. Um, either one will take care of the appearance of those dark spots. And one of my personal favorites is the dark spot brightening serum. Um, I actually took pictures of my skin um, to, to test and because it, it takes, when you have past damage, sometimes uh, it takes a while for these kinds of ingredients to get really in there and get that cell turned over and get, eliminate the, uh, the dark patches. So um, it can take about two to four weeks. Um, so I took pictures to see what happens. I'm only in my, uh, I think my second week. So we'll see. Um, and restoring collection. Um, these are two, <coughs> two different um, um, masks that you can use um, or uh, the light skin peel, mild exfoliant is great. That is a great um, daily exfoliator that you can use to remove the dried dead skin cells and help to drive impurities. Um, both these products make your skin glow. The fruit enzyme actually stays on as a mask, it uses some of the clay as well. Um, and this will help to further draw out in, um, the skin impurities. The longer you can leave it on, the better. Um, and gently exfoliate using fruit enzymes. It's a very gentle way of just lifting off those dead skin cells and restores uh, the, the glow, which we all want. So that's it. Protecting your skin is important. And remember, of course, I think you've, hopefully you've come away today with a better understanding of SPF products and which one might be good for you and how they work. But in general, you wanna limit your sun exposure and start protecting your skin um, young and today. <laughs> okay, so that's it. I'm gonna open it up for um, questions at this point. Anybody has any general questions on what anything that I've covered or something that I didn't cover that you would like uh, me to answer? I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. Um, you can just type your, your message in the box and I will respond. And if you don't have any questions or you think of something later, you can always just shoot us an, uh, an email at revivalabs.com. Um, we are always here for you. And I hope I see some of you next month too. We'll be talking about blemishes, another um, hugely important topic to people. So check our website for future topics. And again, if you, if you don't see something that you want to know about, let us know. We are here to help you. Oh. Okay, I've got a couple of questions here. Are there, uh, is there any additional discount after attending? You know, um, I th uh, the answer, just general answer is no, <laughs> but uh, please visit our website because we are constantly um, promoting various uh, products. I think today there's a, a um, on Instagram, there's a chance to win uh, one of our products. So uh, check our Instagram, Facebook, and our all the social media for us, we're, we're available everywhere, but um, that is a good good idea, Claire. I like that idea of uh, offering something for attending. I will take that back to management. Um, are the sunscreens reef friendly? Okay, um, that's a really good question too. There's an awful lot more coming out about it. So in general, um, avabenzone is coral safe. Um, there's been studies, no detectable levels have been found to harm the, rate, the reef and avabenzone is approved in the US, Australia and Europe. Um, the octinoate um, you, <clears throat> is approved in the United States, Europe and Japan and Australia. However, where, it, where there are coral reefs, it is not coral safe. So uh, places like Florida and Hawaii, the octinoate 
octanoate. Um, the UVB absorber does damage. So I would not use that when I'm in those states that, um, and you want to swim where there may be uh, damage to the reefs. But in general, if you're going to a pool, if you're going to a lake, um, I would absolutely still use it. Any other questions? All righty. I don't think there's any more questions, but if, if uh, I'll stick around for another minute or so in case there are. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else we can offer. You know, just to, re to remind you that our, our sunscreen is also, it was formulated to be a moisturizer as well. So it's in that, that straddle category, if you will, of trying to do two things at once for you. Um, so we don't have a straight up sunscreen uh, for the whole body. Not yet anyway, you know, we're always, we're always looking to develop new products. Terrific. Okay. Well, thank you all for, um, thank you, Claire. Um, and thank you all for joining uh, me today. And I hope you come back next month and learn some more about your skin. Um, okay. Have a, have a great week, rest of your week. And again, thank you. Um, oh, wait, Pat, I see your note. One thing, your distributor is totally out of Aviva products. Oh my gosh. Yes. You can order directly. Um, you know who you speak to? Her name is Carrie. Call the company and speak to Carrie. Um, and then let her know who your distributor is. Um, she's our she's our gal in charge of that. So um, just call the company directly at the 800 number. Alrighty. Thanks, everyone. Talk to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.